And we're back on Talk Back for the second hour. I'm Cynthia Georgina. Mitch Greenwald. And during the 15 minutes, during between now and 1030, we have with us Ian Freeman. Hey, who guys. Is a candidate, good morning. Who is a candidate from, tell us, from District Keene, 16. Which is all of Keene. Yes. So at large. Right. We call it large. And uh, you are not a Republican and you're not a Democrat. That's right. You're a I actually am technically a registered Democrat, but oh. uh, I'm not running as a Democrat. I'm running as a Libertarian. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I've lived here in Keene since 2006. And uh, as I pointed out uh, online and in my, my flyer, that you know the, the representatives that have been elected in Keene the whole time I've lived here have uh, gotten grades from the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance now. I'm not sure if you're familiar with what they do, but one of the many things they do is they uh, they rank each and every one of the state representatives, all 400, uh, all of those state representatives. They look to at, see that list. It's a lot of work. Uh, they look at each one of those reps and they, uh, you know, they look at their voting record and they determine, well, let's see, did this person vote for Liberty on that vote or not? And then they go down the list and they, they tally it up and each uh, rep gets a, a rank between A and F. There's also constitutional threat, which is even worse than F. But uh, A through F, and all of the keen reps are C or below. So most of them D, D minus, F, or constitutional threat. And it's just been that way for a long time. Oh. So I figure we'll put somebody in the race myself who uh, will you know approach things from a principled uh, stance and a pro-liberty stance. Okay. And tell us what you do when you're not running for state rep. I host a talk radio program called Free Talk Live. It, it airs here on WKBK on Saturday nights. Okay. Whenever baseball's not. I was, was going to say, now that the baseball season is over. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. <laughs> so what is the biggest problem in New Hampshire right now? Oh, the biggest problem in New Hampshire, I would have to say, probably the uh, the federal government and the fact that uh, that New Hampshire is involved in it, uh, because uh, you know, I think a lot of people have problems with the federal government. If you look at the the percentages of folks that you know support Congress, for instance, what is it nine percent? The last time I checked, uh, it's never very good, and it's worse now than it's been at, that I can recall in my lifetime. So I think when most people think about the federal government, they don't really it doesn't warm their heart. Uh, they're not really enamored by what the the federal government is doing, uh, whether it's to them and their personal lives or their businesses, uh, trying to regulate them out of business, or perhaps, uh, you know, like me, they might be opposed to war, uh, like going over and killing innocent people around the world, and maybe they realize that doing that is actually what's creating terrorism, if anything's creating terrorism, killing innocent people, uh, and, you know, killing people's family members might make somebody angry. Uh, So, you know, I think that the New Hampshire doesn't benefit in any way, shape, or form from being part of the federal government, so if we could get out of that with, a say, a peaceful secession movement, uh, uh, then we'd be able to take all those tax dollars that right now are being wasted on a variety of nonsense by the federal government and keep all those tax dollars in our communities to benefit the economy, benefit local uh, businesses, and benefit individuals in this area. So I think leaving the federal government is one of the uh, the first and most important things that New Hampshire should do. Do you think that uh, election law enforcement duties should be transferred from the attorney general to the secretary of state? Election law enforcement, meaning uh, some somebody who's checking. Tell me more about what what that is. Exactly. Well, that's that's they've been talking about that. Good heavens, there are all kinds of lights that up here, um, and it, the normally this is a thing that falls to the um, attorney general, mm-hmm. and there's been some talk about now turning it over to the secretary of state and to enforce laws. Honestly, I don't know much about the uh, that particular issue. Uh, I'd be interested in perhaps learning more if there's a way to easily uh, ascertain that information. I think that uh, you know the, the the fewer laws we have in general, uh, the better. I think that you know if there's going to be law enforcement, it should be laws that are actually victim related, mm-hmm. like where somebody is actually being harmed. You know, you have somebody who's been you know, murdered, raped, or uh, property destroyed. I think law enforcement should focus on those matters, uh, whether it's one state agency versus another state agency seems like a toss-up. Um, do you think the state should apply for a waiver of No Child Left Behind? I think that uh, the state should withdraw from the federal government. So I think that would be a good waiver and if we would, didn't. You would withdraw from No Child Left Behind at the same time. If you're out of the federal government, you got no, no, there's no more No Child Left Behind. Okay. That's done. 
would you consider a broad-based tax for New, for New Hampshire? Hampshire? Uh, absolutely not. I think that uh, taxes are theft, and I think that uh, people should be funding. If you've got a program that you think is important and it's a good idea, then people will fund it on a voluntary basis. I don't think you need to threaten people or threaten to you know put them in, in, in a jail cell or take their home from them in order to get folks to support their community. Boy. So, no, I don't support broad-based tax. <laughs> okay. I mean, what would you use to support the government of New Hampshire if, if New Hampshire seceded? Well, obviously, we'd have more money here than ever if the government did secede. Money from, from where? Uh, you'd get to keep more of your money because you wouldn't be paying it to the federal government. So it'd be your money in the first okay. place that you'd get to keep. And so, therefore, uh, if there, uh, again, if there was something worth supporting, whatever the program is, what you, know, you fill in the blank, the name of the program, if it's worth supporting, people will support it. You know, they'll come out and they'll contribute voluntarily, consensually, to support the things that are important to them. And what happens, like, with plowing and things mm -hmm. like that? Well, um, everybody wants the roads plowed, right? So right. clearly people are going to put money towards it. But not if they don't drive. Maybe they don't care. Yeah. Maybe they don't care, in which case that's fine. I mean, there's plenty of people that do drive, and uh, and we know that government is is wasteful. Uh, we know government is is inefficient, and the reasons why it's wasteful and inefficient. One of the big reasons is because it's a monopoly, and they're you're forced to pay for it, and they know you're forced to pay for it. So why bother cutting costs? Why bother doing things efficiently? Why bother run running your operation as uh, you know as slim as possible and efficient as possible? If they knew that people weren't uh, weren't going to be forced to pay for what they're doing, then they would actually have to make it worthwhile. They'd, ha they'd have to run things efficiently. They'd have to be accountable. They'd have to you know, actually answer people's questions and be friendly. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Friendly government people? Um, would you Not all of them are bad. But <laughs> <laughs> would you consider gambling as a way of raising money? I think gambling uh, is something that should be legal. I mean, absolutely. I, I don't. Again, I'm not. I'm not interested in raising money for the state. I'm interested in having the idea of the state go away completely. Uh, the idea of the state is something that is antiquated. It's uh, it's a terrible idea. It's an old idea. It's a it's a bad idea. It's one that's been around for a long time, and like slavery, another bad old idea. It's time for this one to go. So I fully support uh, casinos being able to operate in New Hampshire. I support, you know, if you want to be able to have a, a card night with your friends, you should be able to do that. That's illegal. If, uh, Mitch, you and I want to get together and have a poker night, play some penny poker, that's probably a felony charge in New Hampshire. Really? Yeah, you don't know these things. It's oh. true. <laughs> it's true. Also, uh, what about slot machines? Same, Whatever. Same thing. Uh, it's, again, you know, a free, a free market is you get to do whatever you want, so long as you don't hurt anybody else. So people are going to say, oh, gambling's bad because people get addicted to it. But people who are addicted to gambling are already addicted to gambling. They're gambling online, or they're going to Vegas, or they're going to Atlantic City, or whatever. So let's let people who need help get help. But don't put them in a jail cell. Uh, I remember there was a story out of, I think it was uh, Maine, where some guys at the uh, the veterans, uh, some veterans were having a gambling thing that they were doing, and they actually got raided by the police. I mean, these things happen, and it destroys people's lives much worse than whatever the gambling problem is. Three five seven twelve ninety. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Good morning. I uh, just wanted morning. to call and say hello to Ian. Let him know that uh, we have a lot of support out here. I'm definitely going to be voting in your favor. Gosh, thanks. Um, I want you to keep up the good work, man. You, you really, we need millions more like you. Well, you know, if we have a few thousand, I think that would be nice. But I appreciate, I appreciate the comments, and and I will be the only other candidate on the ballot against the two Democrats, both of whom who have uh, been in office uh, before. I think Chuck Weed still is, mm -hmm. but Delmar was previously, and, and uh, Delmar Burge and Chuck Weed both, uh, I think. Uh, They've been rated F and constitutional threat. Uh, so uh, Delmar was rated constitutional threat. And if you if you want, you can always bullet vote for me. That way, the other two don't get uh, any votes from you. So that's always an option. All right. Well, thank you. And I'll spread the word. Thanks. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Um, three five seven twelve ninety. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, Ian uh, wanted to. Say that it's going to be great to see you at the candidates forum on the 16th at Keem Public Library. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty exciting. Now, when is that happening on the 16th? Uh, that's from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, 
at the Keene Public Library in the Ruth Huntress Auditorium. Now, I heard Chuck Weed is going to be there, but Delmar Burridge has, uh, has not responded. Yes, uh, Chuck Weed will be there, so you will actually have a 30-minute one-on-one debate in a town hall forum where there will be uh, unmoderated questions from the audience, meaning Great. that it's not going to be pre-approved questions. That's exciting. I appreciate the, inv- I appreciate the invitation. And then I will also be there as a candidate for Register of Deeds, and Anna Tilton, who is my Democratic opponent, will be there. But Evelyn Hubble, who is the 19-term incumbent Republican, has not responded to the invitation mm. to attend. She must think she's a shoe in thanks, uh, thanks for reminding us about that. You're welcome. You know, there was something I wanted to put out there, uh, Cynthia, and that is... Uh, I don't know if it's a legislatively done thing, but if it is, I would like to put forth legislation that will turn Keene from a city into a town again. And I think that the, the reason for that is, uh, is well, first of all, uh, there are a number of towns in New Hampshire that actually have a greater population than Keene. So the idea that it's a population-related thing, not true. Uh, I think that uh, the city council has proven that uh, this is a bad organization, that the, the city organization is a bad idea. And the reason, I think the proof of that was the uh, the Bearcat vote, in that there was a huge... Oh, my mic is cutting out. My mic is cutting out. Get off the button. Okay. Oh, sorry. That was my oh, fault. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the Bearcat vote, where the huge numbers in Keene were opposing the Bearcat. Republicans, Democrats, Independents, it was something like 80 or 90 percent of people in Keene that opposed the Bearcat. A tremendous amount of people, you know, poured out their phone calls and contacted uh, the city councilors and told them, we don't want the Bearcat in Keene. But the city council went ahead and voted for it anyway, even though the actual vote meeting was packed full of people. They, there were so many people there that cared about this issue that they actually uh, had to prevent people from coming upstairs. And I just saw that as a perfect uh, example of, you know, the, the city councilors, you guys, uh, at one time, you know, ha- you have the best of intentions. I know you're good people. It's just that they didn't do what the people wanted in that instance. And if it had been a town meeting where individuals in the town actually get a say in something, there's no way that Bearcat would have come through. So I think that's one of the most important things to do locally as far as what, what I could do in Concord is to put forth some sort of legislation that will turn Keene into a town again so the people actually have power again here in Keene. Do you think people would be in favor of that? I think if people were in favor of getting rid of the Bearcat, then they would be in favor of turning Keene into a town. Three five seven twelve ninety. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Uh, good morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. Would you, uh, we're going to have naming rights out of Keene High School now. Would you consider uh, naming the Bearcat, maybe, uh, as, as a way to reduce our taxes and to have a little fun with this whole thing? T- tell me more about that. That sounds interesting. Well, they name uh, over the years. They've named uh, vehicles, and uh, it sort of fell out of favor after World War II. And out at the high school and at uh, college, we have advertisers, placards up uh, up on the walls for you know dealer car dealerships and whatnot. And I was thinking <laughs> sponsorship, <laughs> call it the love machine. Yeah, I call it Herbie the love bug or something. I, don't know. <laughs> I support that. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Thanks. All right. No, I, I think it's a great idea. In fact, uh, I was talking with Terry Clark about the the Bearcat, and we were talking about maybe having like a school uh, class of school children paint it. I thought that'd be nice. Paint it. Whatever color they want to. Oh, okay. You okay. know, something something different than intimidating black. Somebody said if you paint it red, you'd like a fire truck, there wouldn't be any controversy. So. <laughs> um, would you consider changing the law that requires voter ID? Um, you know, I don't think so, because I, I I actually don't show ID to vote, and I think that clearly those laws do discriminate to some extent against people so like in college you know, and you'd be against homeless voter people, ID. for instance. Homeless people should be able to vote, too. Right. That sort okay. Of thing. All right. Um, would you consider doing away with same-sex marriage? Oh, absolutely not. No, I fully support uh, people's right to marry whoever they want to. In fact, I think you should be able to marry more than one person if that's what you're into. Whatever's consensual, as long as people are consenting, it's none of my business. And by the way, I invite folks to visit nh-liberty.com, or excuse me, .info, nh-liberty.info. There's more information about me there. Okay, all right. Thanks. 
And that's our music, so we have just a couple of minutes, or less than a less minute, than actually. Um, tell us more about yourself and why you think, again... Well, yeah, I don't have much time left. If I'd, I'd like to invite people to go to nh-liberty.info. There's more about me there. And see me at the Candidates Forum on the 16th. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thank Good you. Luck.